You old probate. That chewing tobacco that you sold me ain't fit for fertilizer. You're crazy. I've been a chawing that same kind of plug for nigh on to 20 years. Yes? Well, the tobacco is older than that. Get out of my store. Go on. Get out of my store. Get out of here. Get out of my... Them eggs you give me if you had chickens in them. Well, I didn't charge you for them, did I? No, you didn't. But when you could thought you could get away with it. What? I ain't gonna trade here again. I wouldn't have a disposition like you for a thousand dollars. I don't care if your boss has sold all his cows. He can't have no more credit. He's always paid you, hasn't he, Mr. Allen? That don't make no difference. I ain't run no charity institution. You're driving nearly all the ranchers out of town. They're all trading over at Boy. They avoid this town like it had the plague. And it's all your fault. Why, you young whippersnapper, you can't talk to me like that. I'll talk to you anyway. No, I you want won't. It. Get out of here now before I lose my temper. Now, uh, listen, Alice. Listen, nothing. Go on. Get out of here. Go on. Get out of my... Get out of here. Get... Don't you ever come back. I don't want you in my place at all. Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go over to boy and trade. Maybe they'll take buttons for money over there. I won't. Let's do something about this. I'm in favor of teaching the Galoot a lesson. What do you mean? Well, maybe if we throw a scary into him, he'll appreciate being alive. You get a change of heart. Don't like the idea, Joe. Alan's an old man. Old? He ain't older than me. If you're scared of him, thanks, I'll do it myself. All right, Joe. I'll help you. But remember, fellas, no rough stuff. There's the place right over there, boys. Get your slip. Now, remember what I told you. No rough stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, boy, he was going to give that old man the scare of his life. Oh. <laughs> boy, we Now, fellas. Come on. There you go, fellas. Now. I'll duck you now. Gee, fellas, it's a girl. Holy smoke. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, Mr. Don Fiotti, don't you think you'd better do a little explaining? Well, uh, you see, ma'am, first off, my name ain't Don Quixote. Really? I don't blame you for thinking I'm that dumb, miss. But you see, it was like this. I'm Tex Blaine, and me and the boys sort of framed a ghost party to run a galoot out of town. And in the darkness, we mistook you for him. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to forgive you this time, Mr. Blaine. Say, wait a minute. Would you mind telling me who you are? I'm Mary Ann, Dan Allen's niece. He had a bad attack of the gout, and I rode over from Placerville today to take care of the store for a few days. The, the storekeeper's your uncle? What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing at all. Allen's a fine fella. Oh, you know him then? Sure. He and I are good friends. Then you must come in. I'm sure Uncle Dan will be glad to see you. No doubt about it, miss. Remember, any form of excitement will be very bad for you. Just heard about you being sick, Dan, so I thought I'd drop in and see if there's anything I could do. Oh, you hippopotamus! The only thing you can do for me is to get out of here. Oh, now, be calm, be calm. Oh, you're going to ruin that lipstick that's put out here. Let me fix it. 
I'm very sorry, Mr. Blaine. I'm sure Uncle Dan didn't mean it. Oh, that's all right. Do you mind if I ask you a very personal question, Mary Ann? Why, I guess not, Peg. Will you marry me? Certainly not. <laughs> I didn't think you would, but I thought I'd ask you anyway. Hey, Tex, you change your mind about running that old buzzard out of town? So, the old galoot you were going to run out of town was my uncle. I think you're terrible picking on a poor, sick, defenseless old man like Dan Allen. I never want to see you again. You dumb bell. Let's get out of here before we, we get in more trouble. Good night, Mary. Good night, Doctor. Uh, just look after your uncle, will you? I will. All right, good night. Good night. Well, Uncle Dan, I'm going to be boss from now on. You're going to stay in bed for the next few days, and I'm going to take care of the store. So, you think you're going to be boss, huh? Well, you got another thing coming. When I let any scatterbrained female that wears overhauls instead of petticoats interfere in my business affairs, I'll be crippled in the head instead of the foot. But Uncle... Don't you but me, young lady. Go home. Go home where you belong. Go home. Get out of here. Go on. When I want to hear all that. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of right here, you. Ah! Oh, my... Ah! Ah! Hey, Tex, you've got your nerve going in there to call on that girl after what she said last night. Women ain't hard to handle if you know how, Joe. Watch my smoke. Hey, how about waiting on a cash customer? I was looking for Mary Ann. She ain't here. She ain't going to be here. I thought she was going to take care of the store for a few days. I ain't going to have no woman taking care of my store. I sent her home. Didn't ask her over here in the first place. Hey, would you mind telling me where Mary Ann lives and what her last name is? I ain't telling you nothing except getting out of my store. Listen here, Alan. I asked you a civil question, and you can at least answer it. Answer it? I'll show you how to answer. Get out of my store. Get out of here. Go on. Get out of my store. Get out of my store. <laughs> 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 Women ain't hard to handle, you know? <laughs> if you know how, watch my store. <laughs> <laughs> showcase there. Say, listen. Don't forget to tell the boss why I'm quitting. He can send my pay to Placerville. Say, you're crazy as a loon. Maybe so, but I'm going to find Mary Ann. Don't let him get away from you, Sheriff. He's a darn nuisance. Hey, hey. Hey, I want to talk to you. What's the matter, Sheriff? Come on, boys, we gotta catch him. I see here, Dan. You simply got to go someplace where it's quiet. 
too much noise around this town for you. Where will I go? I don't know. I have it. I know the very place. Where? My niece Marianne has a ranch over at Placerville. She'll just be tickled to death to see me. Why, of course you will. That's a capital idea. No, 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 look, I'll take it easy. That's all right, then. I'll see you. Have a good time. Goodbye. Looks like that fella's in trouble. But well, that's what we're looking for. So. Reach for this guy, you fellas. Reach. What's the meaning of this? I represent the law. Sure. That's just the reason you're all heading back up the trail. Take the fellas out of their guns, Kenny. You can't treat the law like that. Why, Sheriff? Me and Wendy, this perfect gentleman. Now, you all go. Bravo! <laughs> you seem to be in somewhat of a hurry, stranger. What's the trouble? I can't understand why that sheriff is after me. Sure, we understand. We don't get along any too good with the law ourselves. My name's Tex Blaine, fellas, and I want to thank you. Forget it, Tex. My name is Skinny Cassidy, and this is my pal, Wendy Wallace. Where are you headed? Oh, no place in particular. And we got all the time in the world to get there. You see, we're just a couple of trouble busters. We're looking for something to happen. Which way are you traveling, Tex? Placerville to find a girl. Is she expecting you? Well, if she was, she'd probably head in a different direction. Wendy, I smell trouble. Sold. Placerville sounds interesting, Tex. We were headed that way and didn't know it. Can you imagine that? What's holding us up, sir? Not a thing. I'm looking for a man with nerve, I told you. Somebody that'll fight me to a finish. Have a heart, Bill. Do your fighting somewhere else, will you? You're all yellow. Every one of you. Shall I kill him in here or take him outside? You kill him. Big Bill belongs to me, Wendy. You're loco. I see him first. Happy the coin. Heads. Hey. 
I said I was looking for a man with nerve. <laughs> if you found a man with nerve, Bill, you wouldn't know what to do with him. Meaning what? I think you're bluffing. Suppose you back up your words if you got the nerve. That ain't going to take much nerve. I win. Ain't that just our tough luck, though? What do you mean, tough luck? You won. Putting on a show for the house, eh? Trying to find a man with nerves, stranger. And I reckon you're elected. You're darn right I'm elected. You'll be an also ran when I finish with you. <laughs> Nerve is that I got a good job for him at a good salary. Suppose we talk it over. Then if you ain't satisfied, we'll continue the fight. It's a good thing you didn't tackle either one of us. Say, how about my pals working? We travel together. One man's all I need. I'm sorry. Don't worry none about us, Ted. If it's a good job, you take it. We'll hook up with someone else. Now, Wendy, let's go and uh, give this town the ones over. So. See you again, Tex. Pedro. What do you have? That's in the house, Pedro. That goes for me. Go again, senor. The job I'm referring to ain't gonna be no cinch. In fact, it's plenty dangerous. <laughs> I'm not so particular about working right now, Jarvis. I'm looking for a girl by the name of Mary Ann. Did you ever hear that name around Placerville? Can't say that I have, Tech. But I'll do some investigating if you want. Come on, what do you say? Shall I give you the lowdown? Shoot. I reckon a little more trouble won't hurt any. Yeah, you aren't thirsty, you're dirty. <laughs> the moonlight on the ocean. Oh, George, I am. Your match? No. <coughs> I got an ID. <coughs> How about old Farf Mo Betsy here? You know, Wendy, sometimes you, you're not as dumb as you look. You're dumber than you look. All right, you get set. And don't weave around too much, because you're pretty drunk. Yeah, you're the one drunk. And, and, and you, you're going to do the shooting. <laughs> so don't you do any wiggling around. Uh, get over there and I'll light your old cigar. <laughs> 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 
Hey, skinny, go that far alongside of you. Get out of the way. You might get hit. What well, fella? You're drunk. I uh, hope so you can shoot better than you can see. Ha <laughs> I didn't miss. My pal. Yeah, go smoker. That's pretty good shooting. Pretty good? Well, that's pussy. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> How'd you like to put your guns to work? You mean there's the trouble in the air? A lot of trouble. And a couple of good gunslingers is the only way out. Sold. And do, do, don't worry about the salary. Thanks. Get your horse and we leave town pronto. Okay. The Bossack never had any trouble with that strip of land, so some engineer figured there was oil on it. Then the lazy wife says it belongs to them. Oh. So my job is to get a hold of that property and hang on to it. Is that right? Yeah, but it ain't going to be no sense. Two of my riders have been shot up pretty bad trying to do the same thing. I reckon I'll get along. We just want to tell you we're going to work. Who for? We never thought that. Nice young fellow, though. Stop over and see it sometime. Sure, anytime. You get him? No, but I knocked his hat off. Is that all? <laughs> that been one of us. We'd have got more in his hat. <laughs> you bet your life he would. You know, Wendy, I think we're going to get what we come after. Trouble? So. Hey. Where's all those tough hombres you wanted us to kill? You know, if something don't happen pretty soon, we'll blow. You know, we haven't shot anybody in two days. We must be kind of slipping, Skinny. Slipping? We've slipped. I think if something don't happen pretty soon, I'll go to town and visit six or eight of my girls. <laughs> you what? Six or eight of my girls? With that mug of yours? When I was in uh, in Texas, the girls chased me so fast I had to beat them off with a wet gunny sack. <laughs> what are you laughing at? For the love of my <laughs> What are you two trouble hunters doing here? 
Well, we are guarding this strip of land. The what? Sure. We hired out to keep people away from the shack. Jim just took a pot shot at some group a minute ago. <laughs> you reckon that fall made him look old? What are you laughing at? That's you, Skinny. The galoot that he shot at was me. What? <laughs> hey, listen. I hired out for Big Bill Jarvis to get possession of this property. We're quitting. Absolutely. Take the guy, pal, and we ain't gonna fight him. You're darn right you're quitting. Now get your hands up and start moving. All of you. Come on, get going. Boy, you sure bedded him down. And go. If you hit my cousin again, I'll have you arrested. What, another relative? Yes, another relative. It seems like all you have to do is to pick on members of my family. Can't seem to blame this. You see, he hired out to Big Bill Jarvis to get possession of this property. I thought you and Wendy were supposed to be working for my outfit. Uh, we was, Miss Perkins, but we quit. Sex is our pal, and we can't fight him. Oh. strip of land is part of the ranch my father homesteaded many years ago. Mr. Blaine, I'm asking you and your men to leave at once. I'm sorry, Mary Ann, for what happened. I didn't know I'd have to fight you when I went to work for Big Bill Jarvis. Won't you believe me? Your future actions will speak for themselves. I'll send Mike out later to relieve you, Jim. All right, Mary Ann. Careful, no There's something I forgot to ask you. Will you marry me? Certainly not. <laughs> we sure made a hit around here, didn't we? You two homely buzzards, get on your horses. Let's get out of here. Oh. Double cross me in a sec. Well, you're fired. You done a double crossing yourself, Bill, when you hired me to fight against Miss Perkins. When you knew that I came to Placerville Finder. Wendy, I'll flip you the coin and see which one of us plug it. So I'll do my own fighting, fellas. Listen, Jarvis, I'm siding in with the Perkins outfit. And when you get back to your ranch, you better stay there. It'll be a lot healthier for you. Savvy? Well, I sure I uh, hope he don't follow your advice. Why? Well, if he does, we'll have to start looking for trouble all over again.
Howdy, folks. Howdy. Just come over to stay a couple of weeks with you. What? What's the matter? Ain't you glad to see me, Mary Ann? Well, I can't say that I am, Uncle Dan. After the way you treated me in Custer City. Oh, shucks, honey. I didn't mean nothing. I've been a mighty sick man. Well, what are you waiting for? Take him inside, young fella. Peace and quiet. Just what the doctor ordered. This place sure fits the bill. We haven't room here for you, Uncle Dan. I'm sorry. You ain't got nothing to say about it, Jim Prickins. The doctor ordered me over here for my health, and I need a lot of it. Now, what are you waiting for? Your money, I suppose. You'll get your money when you get your job done. Go on home, come back after me in two weeks. Ah, oh, this is sure a restful place. I'm going to be plumb contented here. Your ornery hide takes blame. I left Custer City to get away from you. Seeing you here don't make me any happier either, Mr. Allen. What do you wish, Mr. Blaine? Well, you see, Miss Perkins, Tex stopped working for Big Bill yesterday. And now he's plumb anxious to start riding for the Lazy Y. If you hire these troublemakers, Marianne, I'll leave the ranch. And so will I. Well, if I could depend on you to keep your word, Uncle Dan, I'd hire them. Good afternoon, Miss Perkins. I rode over to make an offer of peace to you. Peace? There ain't no such thing anymore. This place is worse than Custer City. What is your offer, Mr. Jarvis? I'll pay you $5,000 cash for that strip of land we've been fighting over. Well, there's oil on that land, and you know it. So you're just wasting your breath. You're all wasting your breath. I don't think any of you own that property. I know when old Tom Perkins homesteaded this ranch 20 years ago, he leased that piece of property from the government because it had water on it. I'll see you about that job later, Mary Ann. Change your mind about that proposition, Miss Perkins. Let me know, will you? Oh, they believe what you say? Why shouldn't they believe me? When I talk, it means something. Jim, you ride into town and look up the record on that strip of land. I'll take Uncle Dan and ride out there and keep everyone away until I hear from you. You ain't taking me nowhere, Mary Ann. I'm heading back to Custer City pronto. You ride into the uh, recorder's office. There's someone at the shack, so I won't be alone there. Dan Allen was right, fellas. There's been an error. Then they're recording that strip of oil land and it's open for filing. Let's ride. We've got no time to lose. Hey, Dick. You see what I see? Tex Blaine. Why, yeah. that's his horse there. Yeah, that's it, all right. Well, he ought to show up most any minute. Well, we'll stay right here till he does. Okay. 
two sheriffs. If they sent that one from Crescent City will recognize us, a fine chance we have getting our horses or them two star packers around. Hey, I've got to beat Jarvis to this lane. So I've got to take a chance. And here's where I do it. I'm going to make an envelope out of you for a while. You and who else? Get in the chair and shut up. You've got to get by them chairs oh, somewhere to get to our horses. Haven't had any excitement of anything for a long time. Get on, sir. People in this town crazy. Where's everyone going, Cy? Si? Ain't you heard? I heard what? With that oil lamp between the box eggs and the lazy wire ranches open the homestead to the first guy that gets there. And I'm the sheriff. I think me and you better go along. There's liable to be trouble. I reckon we had. Hope you enjoy yourself, Dex. Put me out there, Mike. I'm tired of that. Come on.
Dynamite, come here. You wait here, Dynamite. I'll come back after you. I'll go out and see. If you don't give me your word that you won't interfere with me while I'm filing on this property, I'll tie you up too.
What are you fellas all fighting about? I've already filed on this land. You what? Here, Jarvis. I don't want to see you around here no more. See? Now you get out. <laughs> well, you got the oil land all right, Tex, but I'm not through with you yet. Sheriff, I guess there's no use to me running from you anymore. I might as well give myself up. Give yourself up? I ain't after you that way, Tex. The law firm in the East wrote to me and asked me to locate you for. You just fell there to the Bar X Ranch. What? Yeah. Now beat it. You're fired. <laughs> Congratulations, old boy. Thanks. Sure, I want to thank you. I just got here in time. Oh, that's all right, Tex. We'll fix those papers up tomorrow. All right. Let's go back to town, boy. We've been all wrong about Tex, Marianne. He filed on the oil land in your name. You were right about this land, Uncle Dan, and everything is straightened out. Oh, I don't care whether it's straightened out or not. I'm going back to Custer City, where it's quiet and peaceful. Oh, my God! No, my Would you mind if I ask you a personal question? Why, I guess not, sir. Would you marry me? Certainly. Wendy, now there is going to be trouble. Yeah. Little one. So. Oh. <laughs>